Welcome to DX Sudoku training video number 104. In this video, a puzzle solving technique I call Bowman's Net will be demonstrated. Bowman's Net is a mashup of Bowman's Bingo with forcing nets. For more information on forcing nets, a link to a wiki page will be provided in this video's description section. Bowman's Net is like the improved Bowman's Bingo technique in the way the starting cell is determined. But unlike Bowman's Bingo, Bowman's net does not depend on the assumption of the chaining sequence to solve the puzzle. Bowman's net is more like the way X-chains work and the way X-chains eliminate candidates with the first and last link in the chaining sequence. You can use Bowman's net to sane out a wide variety of candidates normally found in many other popular puzzle solving techniques. A year ago, when I came up with bi-value elimination, or BVE, I did not know at the time it was Bowman's bingo. I hope the same isn't true with Bowman's Net. There may already exist a puzzle solving technique similar to Bowman's Net that I don't know about. If you think what I'm demonstrating here already exists under a different name, please post a comment in this video's comment section. Because of the way this puzzle solving technique gobbles up candidates to be removed, I was thinking of calling it the Pac-Man puzzle solving technique. But I think Bowman's Net is more representative of what the mashup is doing. Watch DX Adoku video number 103 titled Improved Bowman's Bingo Puzzle Solving Technique as a prerequisite video for this video. Consider the following Sudoku in progress. The first step in the algorithm is to determine the starting cell. All the bi-value cells are now highlighted. Just as with the improved Bowman's Bingo algorithm, we are looking for a bi-value cell having the highest count of cells set by the first and second set of weak and strong links for both candidates. Bowman's net works best when both candidates in the bi-value starting cell generate long chaining sequences. Rather than go through each bi-value cell and determine the count, I decided to just pick one I thought looked good by a quick visual count. So I picked cell 7,9 to be the starting cell, even though it may not be the best one. When we assume cell 7,9 is not equal to 2, there are a total of 5 cells set in the first two sets of weak and strong links. When we assume cell 7,9 is not equal to 3, there are a total of 6 cells set in the first and second set of weak and strong links. So for starting cell 7,9, it has a total of 11 cells set for both candidates combined. A total of 11 seems like a good enough number. If our chaining sequences are too short, we will use a different starting cell. Next, we begin our chaining sequence by assuming cell 7,9 is not equal to 2. What we are going to do is record every candidate that is removed from the puzzle by a strong or weak link. The next set of candidates removed by strong and weak links are now highlighted in purple. We record the candidates removed by the chaining sequence in our notes. The purple candidates are removed from the puzzle. The next set of candidates removed by strong and weak links are now highlighted in purple. We record the candidates removed by the chaining sequence in our notes. The purple candidates are removed from the puzzle. Before I go off and complete the chaining sequence, I found something interesting. All the cells having a possible 3 candidate are now highlighted. If you watched DX Sudoku video number 103, you know that when doing chaining sequences this way, you can use other puzzle solving techniques to create group node strong links in our chaining sequence. The candidates highlighted in green form a skyscraper pattern, which allows us to remove the candidates highlighted in purple. The purple candidates are removed, and we update our notes to record the group node strong link results. I'm going to go off and complete the chaining sequence and continue to record all the candidates removed by strong and weak links. I'll be right back. I'm back. At this point, our chaining sequence has completed. All the candidates removed by strong and weak links have been recorded. I've updated the algorithm notes on what to do next. I reset the puzzle back to its original state. Then we start a second chaining sequence, but this time we assume cell 7,9 is not equal to 3. From our chaining sequence, here is the first set of candidates to be removed, highlighted in purple. Take a closer look at the 2 candidate in cell 7,5. Because the 2 candidate was not removed in our first list, 
we record it being deleted in the list below. Take a closer look at the sixth candidate in cell 9,4. Because the sixth candidate was deleted in our first chaining sequence, we mark it with a double asterisk in the top list. I'm going to go off and complete the second chaining sequence. For the same candidates that were deleted in the first chaining sequence, I will mark with a double asterisk in the above list. For other candidates deleted from the second chaining sequence, I will record in the list below. I'll be right back. I'm back. All the candidates deleted by both chaining sequences are now marked with a double asterisk. And all the candidates deleted by the second chaining sequence only are listed below. Notice in the house making up block 2, we have a contradiction by having two 3s. And also notice cell 3, 1 is empty. Don't worry if your chaining sequence results in any contradiction. All that matters is which candidates are removed by both chaining sequences. I've updated the algorithm notes on what to do next. I reset the puzzle back to its original state. All the candidates removed by both chaining sequences are now highlighted in purple. The logic for Bowman's net works as follows. Consider our by value starting cell 7, 9. If both chaining sequences result in the same candidate being removed, then that candidate can be removed from the puzzle. This is because one of the two chaining sequences must be the correct one. If both chaining sequences remove the same candidate, then there's no way that candidate could ever be the value of its cell. In this example, with Bowman's net, we have identified 39 extra candidates floating around which can be removed from the puzzle. We remove the 39 extra candidates from the puzzle. So with just one sweep of Bowman's net, we were able to eliminate target candidates from a set of five XY chains from the puzzle. From this point, the puzzle is easily solved. The first few times I did Bowman's net, it seemed a little time consuming. Around the fifth time, I got really good at doing it and processing the chaining sequences went pretty quickly. I think overall, Bowman's net is faster than searching for XY chains or AICs, which are very time consuming to find. This completes the Exodoku training video number 104. Please support the Exodoku by purchasing one of my books. Thank you for watching.